um, it's great to be with you uh, this evening. Um, I uh, have a, a hope, a wish, a prayer uh, in, in my heart that what we have learned will be a benefit to you. We found that um, uh, we've been at this since 1989. Uh, we've been trying to improve the experience for students and help students make more out of the experience uh, and keep tweaking and tweaking and, and learning. And, and we've been intensively gathering data in the last, uh, or last decade. Uh, unfortunately, um, unfortunately, many people don't listen. Uh, or they don't think it applies to them, and so I, I would just I would beg you, you know, sometimes the mess messenger gets in the way of the message. Try to, you know, if I'm doing obnoxious things or whatever, try and let that let that go, and try and think this, maybe this maybe this just might be relevant for me. I should probably just in case because um, we've had one student. Let me give you an example. How many of you um, have experienced culture shock? Okay. How many of you think you're going to experience culture shock in Jordan? Okay. How many of you don't think you're going to experience culture shock in Jordan? Okay. Um, there's a. Uh, it's been really, really interesting to see students who have spent quite a bit of time in country uh, and go back and and still have culture shock experiences quite surprisingly so. For example, I was reviewing the CASA program uh, in Cairo a couple of years ago and was really surprised to find that students who had spent, many of them, quite a bit of time in, in, in uh, some of them had, had lived in Cairo before, spent time, time all around the Middle East, uh, um, still were experiencing new aspects of culture shock that they didn't anticipate. It changes according to your proficiency level. Um, if, if, if you cannot speak really very much and your penetration into the culture isn't very deep, then you don't experience a lot of the things that people do experience who, who bore down uh, in deeper. And, and so, for example, our Chinese, language, our Chinese flagship students, that's been one of their biggest surprises, is, is that people who are multiple, uh, people who have spent um, you know, multiple trips there, extended period of time, the, 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 these are people at the highest level, very high levels of proficiency, experienced culture shock in ways, in quite unexpected ways. So, so it's probably a good idea to keep, to, to, to watch out for, for this. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about some of the things to watch out for. First of all, let me just say that um, I, I hesitated, I almost put in my adventure, putting in, you know, making the most of my adventure, because it is, it, it is a, a, an adventure um, for a number of reasons. Uh, uh, one, because you never know exactly what you're going to get. Um, but also because uh, of the, the, it, it is an exciting thing to go and challenge, and, and uh, uh, anyway, I'm not going not to belabor that. So moving along, let me give you just a little bit of background about um, some of the things that we've been up to. This, this National Middle East Language Resource Center, this is relevant to you. Um, so this is, this is the group that we work with. We're, our headquarters are here at BYU, um, and we've got people all over the country. Uh, look, Essentially, we're working on you know, these, these three areas, um, and the pathways to proficiency is the one that most, most, most in, um, uh, uh, it, it concerns you. That, that is, how do I want, how do I get to um, the, the level of, a bar of, of, of language and culture ability that I want? Um, Congress says that this is what we're supposed to be up to. That's the, um, that's the mandate to, for the funding, it comes through Title VI. Uh, which is the uh, successor to the old uh, NDFL, um, National De Defense Language, NDEFL, whatever it is. Anyway, that, that, that was probably the recipient of, of, of that funding, uh, which was a result of Sputnik, right? So we have this, ah, the Russians are ahead of us, we got to catch up, and, and, uh, and so forth. So, so, so I'm very, very, I've become, um, I, I have observed, visited, talked with, seen videotape of, um, interviewed students all over the Middle East, um, Turkey, Israel, um, uh, Arab world, etc. cetera. Um, and, uh, and, and I'm convinced, and I'm convinced we can do quality better because I've seen quality. Uh, I've seen quality uh, and, and uh, we're trying to implement some of the, you know, the ideas that people uh, 
uh, come up with from around the different places. Okay, so this is kind of stuff that, w that we're involved with. And one of them that I, that I want to sort of point out right now is this assessing lictal needs. Lictal is less commonly taught language needs and developing action plans. So, so we're trying to figure, we're trying to understand how do we better serve students. So we, sur we surveyed, oh gosh, we're, we're, we're going on, you know, a lot of students now uh, that we've been surveying over the, over the years. And, one, and the, what we find is um, very interesting that people are very interested in traveling the region. The only people who really aren't interested in traveling the region are those who have been there. They're heritage learners and it's like, they've never done that. Um, and, uh, and very high on the list of folks is achieving professional level, pro le level fluency or proficiency. How many of you would say that that is accurate for you, that you are in this for professional level proficiency? It's, you know, it's pretty typical. Uh, and, and I don't want to play that, play that down. That is wishful thinking. Achieving professional level proficiency is wishful thinking if it doesn't turn into very specific day-to-day -day goals. And I'm not, uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna see some of this um, in, in, uh, in, in, in Jordan. And it's amazing, it's amazing in the fog of, uh, of life how quickly our focus can erode. So I'm not the fun sucker, okay? I, I'm not the fun sucker. You could, some of the people who, the people who are, in fact, I'll show you empirical evidence that, that people moving towards their goals of achieving professional level pr proficiency are by and large having a really, really good time. That's, that's a, it's a very satisfying, very fulfilling sort of experience. But it doesn't happen automatically. Uh, Elizabeth was talking about her study abroad experience. There is no magic. There is no magic in the water in Jordan. Possibly there is the opposite. Um, you never know. Some of the pipes are old. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and like I said to the group, and I apologize to, to, you know, for, for those who have had to listen to me, repeat some of this stuff. It's, it's, it's worth re repeating, I think. So, so just bear with me, uh, uh, those of you I spoke to before. I, I talked about that the same spirit that gets on the plane here gets off the plane with you in Jordan, right? You have, if you are a procrastinator here, you are a procrastinator there, right? If you are really, really diligent about reviewing vocabulary here, son of a gun, you tend to do that over there. So now is the time to repent. Um, okay, so let's talk just a little bit about the most important factor in language learning. Uh, sorry, not in language learning, in any learning. Some of you have already been through this exercise, so don't shout out the, 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 the answer that I'll have on the next slide, but you can just kind of sit here and wait, wait for it. But think, think. This is really, really important that we learn to engage. And right now is a time for some of you to disengage, because you've been here, been there, done that, you know, saying, no, I don't need to listen to this. You can engage in other ways. You can start thinking of, okay, you figure it out, okay? Really good exercise. So, most, most important factor in, in learning, quickly. Bring it on. Intense personal motivation. Oh, I like it, I like it. Um, uh, interest in the subject. Interest. Like personal, personal application. Interest. interest, very nice, very nice. Interestingly, interest is a choice, not a random thing, right? Sometimes you think, oh, I like science fiction. I don't. And you think that that is just the way you are. It's a choice. It's a choice. We've had, we had students, for example, I just tell you, really, really smart, smart people um, who, who got to Jordan with us in 2006. I have a, I have a student who's... Um, just an, an amazing student, and she said, she thought, I'm an amazing student. I should be. I should have a. a I, I'm not really interested in politics. I want to do. Can't I do something like in linguistics? We said to her, Well, um, no. <laughs> one thing. One reason being that when you run a program, and, and this is a really important point to make for you, and that is when you run a program for 30 people or so, um, there's certain streamlining that needs to, needs to take place. 
And as participants in the program signing up, it's really, really important to have a team mentality, a team spirit, right? I am, I am in this, going to make this good for the team. It's, it, 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 if, if we have 30 people who are looking for the perfect experience for them and not thinking about the others, this will be a disaster for everybody. Um, uh, it was, I, I interviewed today a student who said one of, the main, one of the most important factors for his successful experience with, with us in 2011 was the unity of the group. Since the unity of the group made enormous difference. So, so this business about interest is a choice. And, and, and lots of things are a choice that we don't necessarily think about as being choices. When we think about, oh, I like this or I like that. That's not just because you were wired that way. It's typically because of your experiences and choices. And you can choose to like other things. And you can choose to say, I'm going to do this for the group. I'm going to like this for the group. I'm going to make this work for the group. I'm going to be on time to get on the bus for the group. Because it's not fair to everybody else that, you know, that I have this hobby of hanging behind and wanting to take a picture when nobody else is off, is off the bus, right? I'm a special child. Um, <laughs> I, I have one of these. Um, anyway, uh, so, so this, this business about, about choice, uh, about interest in choice. So, so, so we, made the, we made the case for this person of saying, this person who didn't want to do current events because she wanted to do linguistics, we said, if you want to talk to people, you have to be able to talk current events. Everybody is, is at least up on and interested in current, current events. Um, some a little more than others, but it's something that's so ubiquitous it's that, that you, would be, you would be considered an, you know, an idiot if you weren't up to, up, to, uh, up to speed on what's going on in the, in, in, in the region. So it's really, really important. Even if, you're, if your interest is primarily art history, Current events is still really important for you because you want to be able to talk to people, right? So, anyway. okay, so so great. These are great, and let's get back to it. Okay, we had interest and motivation, and yes, it's tied to the bulb of desire. Okay, like. desire is very closely to, to um, and desire is another choice thing. Time on task. Ah, okay. Time on task, really important. So it's spoiler. Um, <laughs> so good. So let's talk about. I don't want to be. I don't want to belabor this. Uh, 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 but I kind of do. <laughs> so this isn't very, neither of these words is very sexy, right? Um, I mean, we'd like to have, we'd like to have magic pills. We'd like to have, um, we'd like to have it dressed up in, you know, whatever. Uh, but, 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 but for time, you know, that tick tock, tick tock thing, and the task, think of the rock pile, you know, it sort of comes to mind. So we've got to, re, got to redo our mental Im image of time on task. Now, who is engaged? Thank you very much. Sir, yeah. do you consider time spent courting the beloved as um, onerous, uh, burdensome? Um, do you count the minutes? You do not count the minutes. Good thing. Okay, right answer. Um, the best way to log time on task is to love the direction that you are going, right? I love the word engagement. What does engagement say to you? So see, sort of, sort of you, you get the notion of distraction, like our friend here is like when, when he is with his beloved, he's sort of like, gosh, I can't, I can't wait till this evening is over and I can go home and play Nintendo. <laughs> Probably not, right? What does engagement mean for you? Never mind, let's not talk about announcements and so forth, okay? I, um, let's stay back to why you got engaged, okay? There's, there's, in everything in life, there is some pushing through that you have to do, right? You, you have to survive the announcements. You have to survive all of the arrangements and so forth that are were my favorite part. Um, <laughs> where is our mind if we are engaged? Focused. 
okay? We are intensely, intensely focused. And, and the best learning, what, when learning takes place, when you want the answer really, really bad. Whether it's the answer, yes, I will marry you, or uh, you name it, you name it, what it is that you want to be able to do. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you right now about a young woman, um, Anna. She was a student of Chinese here. I, I, I maybe I've told you this a little bit before, quickly. Anna, great, great role model for understanding what can happen if we work so that um, we have this single-minded pursuit of a goal, of a, of a, of a, of a goal that is um, close. So my, my, my grandson, um, William, when he was like four, four or five months old or something like that, um, you could put him on the bed and you could put the, and you could put the, um, the, the remote control just out of his reach. And he could not crawl, but he always got the remote, okay? If you took that remote and you moved it one foot out, he didn't even think of trying to reach for that remote. If you have goals in Jordan that are one or two inches away from your reach that will make you stretch, you will move mountains. But if you go to Jordan thinking, I want to develop professional level proficiency, it will be an enormous difference in, the, in, in, in what you accomplish. Enormous difference in, in, in what you accomplish. And, you, and it will be not as happy an experience as well. I, I'm not saying I am not, am not, I am not saying that you want to go and deprive yourself of sleep and, um, and never take a break and, 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 and not eat well and so forth. Absolutely not. This is, I mean, if you want to have a really good, I mean, think about a long distance race. I'm not talking about child's play like a marathon. I'm talking about, think about, you know, a hundred miler or something like that, right? I have some friends who run hundred milers. Boy, do they pay attention to what they eat and 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 taking care of themselves, right? This is this is not a uh, this is not like a uh, a walking park. And I and I apologize if this seems like gosh, he keeps coming up with these metaphors that are like grueling, grueling, grueling. <laughs> no, no, no. Now I, I I've got some other pictures I can show you of how much fun some of these guys are having, who who did that. Put it out there. Put it out there. Put it out there. Stretch me. Stretch me. Bring it on. Bring it on. Give it to me. You know, uh, sort sort of attitude. So anyway, Anna. Back to Anna. So Anna, our Chinese student. Anna had um, a tremendous ability at visualizing where she wanted to go, and and coming up with a step that was just the right amount to, to stretch her. You know, so it was enough to capture her intense focus efforts and and um, and pulled her along uh, incredibly. So Anna would, would, would come up with a goal like this. You would think, I want to learn how to answer a phone just like a Chinese person does. So what she do? What do you think she did? Call the people. Okay. She made a lot of calls. But before she made a lot of calls, what do you think she did? She, she listened to a lot of calls. I think she listened over and over and over to to movies, like, like, say, okay, what did they, say? what did she say, what did she say? She, she's, you, you know, she hears, she hears somebody get, you know, and they made it, made it around the phone, phone, she's tuned in, she's tuned in, she's, she's bringing it in, gathering it, gathering it, writing, it, writing down notes, taking notes, recording, playing these things over and over again, observing, 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 practice, 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 got it down, got it down to where, you know, nobody could tell if she wasn't a Chinese, a native Chinese speaker, if they, if she called, she called them on the telephone. Okay, check, got that done. So then next, next, next project, she, she goes on study abroad. She says to her, to her host mother, I want to be just like a Chinese daughter. Like, ooh, scary. Um, <laughs> for, just like your daughters. Okay, bring it on, you know? And, and she took the abuse, she took the shame, she took the, you know, and she learned to be a, a, a Chinese daughter. I mean, took, she really had a, a, that, that full cultural experience, embraced that experience. Today, Anna 
is a um, international works in an international law firm, and she writes um, briefs in Chinese. Okay, which used to at first I thought, wow, that's incredible, and now I think, no, what are they? What is Chinese legal language going to be like? Just like our own, a whole bunch of formulae, a whole bunch of things that are very highly repetitive. You can do anything if you're patient enough, right? And if you want to, um, and this this is a probably a good time, a good time to say, okay, let's say, did you want to do professional level proficiency? Yeah, sure. Okay, and can you too? Okay, now if what's your name? Paul. Paul and Tyler. Tyler. Okay, so Tyler, let's say that Paul is he just is quick coming out of the gate, right? And, and, and let's say that, in the, 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 I mean, maybe you've noticed, Paul, that, that, that it, you notice it just in class that he just wor learns vocabulary so much faster than you. And, and, uh, and then he gets to Jordan and it's sort, of, sort of like, he talks circles around you. And, and, and before you know it, you just feel like, bye, Paul, <laughs> you know? And it's, it's a little bit discouraging, right? Why? Why would it be discouraging? Because maybe I, I might feel like, why, why aren't I at that level too? Okay, okay, you could say to yourself, what, what, why, why, you know, why, why can't I run that fast? How many of you are run on the track? And how many of you are miserable? Are you miserable if somebody passes you? No. Okay. You're miserable if somebody passes you. Yeah, I'm okay. usually that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I just want to put this little little diagram up. Oh. Say, Tyler, you know, it's usually not that. It's usually not half. It's usually something like. It's usually something more like this. But this gap seems incredible, right? You're you're just you might just be a few uh, a few yards behind, but if Paul is just gaining a little bit on you every time. You know, with every month. It, it can be a little bit daunting. Okay, so who cares, right? Now, in um, in ten years, let's emerge on the other side of ten years, <laughs> and uh, here's Tyler. Where's Paul? Where's Paul? <laughs> Are you here to compete with somebody else in this room? If anybody isn't here to compete with somebody else in this room, um, heaven help you. Because uh, it's, it's, it's miserable. If, if that's what you're doing, if you're here just to be, you know, sort of like that's what your life's about. But if your life's about your goals, right? I mean, Tyler, if it takes you an extra month or two to get to your goal, or an extra year, or an extra two or three years to get to your goal, and you get to your goal and you're really happy with your with you, with where you have arrived, so right, our one of our biggest challenges when we were there for some of the students was that feeling of I feel so discouraged because somebody is out ahead of me. And the more that you can nip that in the bud, have the mental presence, we're going to talk about self-awareness a lot here, the more that you have the, the mental presence to say, this thinking is not helpful, this thinking is from a source I don't appreciate, right? Uh, it's not going to be useful for me. This is thinking that's going to pull me down. I can't afford that. I'm going to take joy in my journey. And I'm going to applaud my fellow students, and I'm going to, you know, so forth. So anyway, so that, that's a really important, this, this thing about the tortoise and the hare, you know, and nobody's really a tortoise or a, a, a tortoise here. You're, you're, you're all just hares of various, you know, whatever. Um, and uh, it's, yeah. I'm going to tell you a little bit later a story about a, a, a hare. Um, no, I think I'll tell it to you right now. Um, so we had this student. We had this student a few years ago, um, more than a few years ago, uh, 
and, and he was, um, I, have, I have never seen anybody work harder in my life to, to learn Arabic, bar none. I mean, I mean, he had to struggle like nothing I had ever seen. And I wanted to tell him, I wanted to tell him, say, man, just cut your losses and be happy that you've had to, um, you know, you, you, you've, you've learned some things and don't, why are you torturing yourself, sort of thing. It was, it was painful to watch. Um, and uh, he kept coming to me for letters of recommendation. I would say, boy, is this guy a hard worker. Boy, is this guy diligent, right? And, uh, and that, was, that, was, that was about what I, could, what I could say. Well, he's just a late bloomer. He turned out to be, he turned out to be a late bloomer. He, 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 went through our, he went through three years here, and then he went on study abroad, and he came back, and he really wasn't that good. Hadn't study abroad really didn't work for him all that well. Worked harder than. Oh man, I'll, I'll read you some of some of his his prose here in, in, in a second about his experience. So same time he got a Fulbright to Jordan, and I bumped into him uh, in Jordan about six months later, and I could not believe the transformation. It was astounding. He was he was just. Speaking at a rate I could never, I never dreamed possible. This guy, it was like some switch went on. And by the way, this is exactly what happened for Kristen Brustad. What, what she was an unremarkable student, uh, got onto CASA, um, CASA student, and one day, just all this Arabic that she was practicing, all this Arabic that she was watching and reading and so forth, it just all went click, and she just. It was like she just emerged from the head of Zeus, full blown. <laughs> and speak Arabic, and now she's one of the most amazing um, speakers of Arabic, um, professors of Arabic that we have in the, in the field. Amazing, absolutely amazing. So you just never know what's going on up in that brain. You can just keep keep working and keep feeding it. So forth. so let me read you. So so Ahmed, the, get, 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 Ahmed was always um, Ahmed was always shooting high, very high, always shooting high. He was, he'd keep coming to ask for these recommendations to go study, and, uh, and, and it was always something like Marshall scholarships, Rhodes scholarships, things like that. I'm just thinking, oh my goodness, okay, you know, nobody comes and asks me for Marshall scholarships, Rhodes scholarships, recommendations, and, uh, except for Ahmed, all the time, all the time. So Ahmed just finished his PhD at Oxford here, like, um, he's got a few more dots to cross and T's to cross and so forth, but uh, just a crazy, crazy deal what, what, what he's done over the course of his lifetime. And wonderful, he's been involved with Boy Scout efforts to bring, uh, for example, Boy Scouts from the kingdom, uh, from Saudi Arabia to the States, and, and he's just a great, great human being. Um, so he goes on, he says, I says, I'd like to, I, I'd be curious to know when you were on study abroad, what you did. He says, I studied like crazy, really applied myself in class, learned all the vocab I could, really tried to pronounce things like our T.A. Nader and Neiruch spoke. I went out all the time and read every sign, wrote the words down, made sure I went. What I, I knew what it all meant. I tried to speak to, speak to the locals, even if I was wrong. I memorized blocks of phrases to use in situations. Brilliant strategy, Me memorized blocks of phrases, chunk learning. Um, uh, I listened to what the locals were saying around me and wrote stuff down and asked Dill later what it meant. Oh, poor Dill. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and he, anyway, so, um, hardest thing was getting tired. Learning language intensively is draining, and I remember at times just being fried, hitting the wall. I still loved it, though, and just took a break and came back to it later. Um, I asked him, did you get discouraged? He says, I wanted to speak better, faster, like a native, so I set a high bar, and that frustrated me, but at the same time kept me pushing. Um, I said, oh, so what, how did you get back into the game when you got discouraged? Some days are good, some days are bad. When you get fried, just take a break. Really important. Recognize that when you need a break. Take a break. Not a two-week break. You know, take a, if you'll take a break when you need that break early in the game, then you'll only need a small break. But if you burn out, choke on your dog. Um, says, uh, take a break. I got back in when I was ready. I also knew our time was short, so I did not want to waste time. Set a goal to learn a little each day, and after weeks, months, you know, a ton. 
It just takes time and persistence. Um, so I said, did you sometimes find yourself indulging in avoidance behavior to avoid doing Arabic? Sometimes when I was tired, I did that. Bottom line, I wanted to learn Arabic. I was focused, knew it was a skill I wanted to have, and did not give up. Uh, there you go. From, from the guy who was at the back of the back of the back of the pack. And today is, 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 is way out ahead of him. I mean, he's one of the most successful professionally in terms of achieving his goals that, 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 that I know of. Amazing, amazing. From the very, very, very back of the pack. So if you're feeling like, dang, this is not coming, you just think, this is nothing compared to what Ahmed experienced. And, um, and, and he, is, he's the mystery. All right, so time on test, moving on. Yes, I, what? Would that be a way, like, to get his email or a way to contact him? Yes, I'm sure he'd be happy to correspond. Um, he's a great guy. So. Uh, we have this thing called the, the, the ceiling effect. Um, all these students who want to acquire, a, 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 to arrive at an advanced level or, or professional level proficiency, and that means different things for different people. So that's another reason not to compare, you, compare yourself. What, what, mean, what, what Tyler's going to need for his professional needs is not what John's going to need. Okay? It's, just, it's just not the same. You, you guys are going to be doing You'll, you'll be doing different things. You'll need different um, skill sets and levels of ability and so forth. And um, yeah, anyway. So typically, what we find is you can't get enough time in a typical university setting. It's going to take more. So you're going to need to do things like go on uh, critical language uh, scholarships and, and 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 continue on in grad school. It's just, this is you know this study abroad experience is. Um, is a great foundation. You, you do it, you, 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 it'll be a great way to, 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 to learn some great skills and get some good ability, some good proficiency, uh, and, 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 and just launch off in the direction of where, where, you, where you want to be going. Okay. Yes? What's, le what's a category three language? Category three is, uh, oh, category three language is Russian. Arabic's a category four language. Okay? So, it's just, but don't. Don't make too much out of that. People, um, people have a nasty habit of trying to make Arabic harder than it is, um, and, and you, you don't want to listen to those people. <laughs> yeah, you know some of those. Um, so yeah, this is basically a graph showing that you know where you're going to be uh, after X hundred number, X number of hours. Okay, back to motivation. So. Um, I'm going to rip through these slides pretty quick because I want to tell you some more stories, uh, but I think there's good good food for thought. Good good food for thought here. Um, hard to tell now. As you read these, do not look at motivation as some sort of static thing, right? Motivation is incredibly volatile. It, it you you can. Um, you can be, it can be down in the dirt uh, and, you know, like zero one day and the next day, you get, and there's all kinds of things you can do. You can choose to be motivated and you can choose to do things that will stoke that motivation, right? You can choose to demotivate. And one of our biggest problems with motivation is when motivation meets fear, right? When you start to fear, I might not make it. And then you don't want to try so hard, because what if you really tried and failed, right? That wouldn't be good. Our, our, uh, our brains are really, really averse to failure. And, um, and it's a good idea if you're looking at, like for example, if you're standing on a ledge and, and 30 feet over is another ledge and you think, can I jump? And your brain says, oh, I don't think so. That's useful, right? You should, <laughs> you should listen to your brain. You say, yeah. Okay, let's strike one for pessimism, you know, that's, 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 that's great. But, you know, if on, with good, uh, if you step back and think about something and, 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 and so forth, you think, you know what, Brain, I think you're wrong. I think you're wrong. And you're just trying to avoid work. Or you're just trying to avoid, and typically it's you're trying to avoid looking stupid. Because you're, 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 there's a part of your brain, I'm not kidding. I, I'm, I'm really not kidding. There is a part of your brain that does 
that, that is not up in the frontal court, court um, what do you call it? That, thank, thank you. Yeah, there is a part of your brain that is not part of the, the rational you that is saying, don't make me look stupid, don't make me look stupid, okay? And, and the rational brain can overrule that and say, but if we'll look stupid here and do this and practice it, we're going to look even smarter later. And you can soothe that thing and say, okay, okay, right? Okay, push on, push on, right? And believe me, there is this dialogue going on where the part of your brain is saying, don't do this. Everybody will laugh. And you have to say, it's okay if everybody laughs. Because that's where I want to go. I don't want to stay where I am. Okay. So you can, um, um, I, love to put, I love to put this up for teachers, but I want you to think about it as the student. You don't need to wait for teachers. Now, we do this. We, we, we in, the, in terms of the program, Dill and I and, and, and Doug have been brainstorming for years trying to improve the situation, construct the experience so it's more motivating, a richer, a deeper learning experience, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you can go the next level. You know what you need. You can construct experiences out, outside of the program, like, like your speaking appointments. Your speaking hours, your two hours a day speaking, you know, that you're going to be doing, um, it can be just get by two hours, or it can be, hmm, I'm going to take a little bit of time, I'm going to prepare, and I'm going to be very strategic about what I do with this two hours, and I'm going to make it count, right? It won't work out perfectly, ever. It won't work out great, mostly. But it might work out really good two-thirds of the time. And that's way better, way better than if you were just going through the motions, right? All right. So there's this, um, uh, good, good. Um, there's this research on the conference was held, got together, on, acquired a bunch of, bunch of experts on on learning, the Navy pulled together this conference on, on, on what does it take to become an expert uh, uh, at, at something. A surgeon, a uh, chess player, uh, top gun pilot, all kinds of skills, right? What does it take, take to become really, really, really expert? And the bottom line was they, they found that this solitary practice was the most common denominator of all, among all of these. Now, that's really kind of interesting, especially when you're thinking about things like you know, language learning where you, it's a pretty, pretty communal sort of, a pretty, pretty communal sort of thing you think. But just like, <coughs> just like great athletes, right, Michael Jordan did not become Michael Jordan on the court with everybody else, right? I mean, this is a guy who was not that great, didn't even make his high school team. But his coaches talk about the kinds of training that he did all by himself. Uh, there's, there's some really, really important stuff that can go on. And I'm so glad we got to the, the, athlete, the athletic side of things because language learning is a lot like becoming a great athlete. Right? It's, it's skill learning. In, in fact, um, I just had somebody who was telling me uh, about her. She just did, she's a, a French teacher who had just interviewed a, a volleyball coach. And the kinds of things that they were telling them, their volleyball team, the way that they approach teaching skills in volleyball, is exactly like we try to help language learners. Like, for example, chunk learning, learning to focus on these, focus on fundamentals, practice and practice and practice them over and over again in isolation, and then insert them into the game, right? And that's and that can make, and that's what that's the kind of thing. So 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 as you're learning. Try to take advantage of expert coaches. Dale, other, um, Matt's got, Matt's gonna have some great stuff to share with you. Who else is going? Um, Doug. Doug, right, right. And Doug, oh, all, all of them got, got great stuff. They may not know exactly the thing that you need, but they've got so much experience that they'll be able to give you, a lot of times, an enormous leg up. And then you'll have to do some experimentation to find and, 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 and find what worked for you. What works for you. Um, so the, the 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 most important thing I think I want to I want to communicate with this is it's not just time, and it's not even um, it's not even time on task, but the more targeted that 
experience can be, the, 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 more, the higher the quality of that experience, uh, the, the better. And yeah, anyway, we'll, we'll get you some more stuff. So you'll notice that in this Georgetown study, uh, this was a study done on about 1,300 study abroad students from various universities. Uh, they call it, um, um, and, uh, and, and, and one of the things that they, no they noticed was that people, people who had the benefit of longer programs, of content courses, and of, which is like your, your, um, your current events class, right? So they're doing content courses in the third language, and that have mentoring and guided cultural reflection. They improved, the SOPI is a, is a measure of, it's a, or, or it's a simulated oral proficiency interview, it's a tape, so tape experience. Uh, so they were significantly better in their speaking ability and in their intercultural growth. Anyway, something, things we've, we've, we've been trying to build in. All right. So here you talk about teachers. Now think about this as a student. I can, I can work to shape my environment outside the, and inside the classroom, right? You can make the class a better place for your being there, for your being prepared, for your, for your encouraging, for your you know, being a team player. But you can also do all kinds of things to shape the, the experience outside of the classroom. Um, and here again, same sort of thing. Okay, so I, I ran across this quote a few years ago. A few years ago, and it, and it, it was a, it was a um, huge. I, I just thought it really captured a really important, um, really really important insight. Ultimately, if you're going to succeed in this quest of your your, your quest for professional level proficiency, or whatever it is that you want to do. Some of you, it, professional level proficiency may not be the thing that's really um, the most important uh, thing for you. Whatever it is you want to do, um, there, is, there is no uh, substitution for your being in charge. We've talked about a lot, you've probably seen this responsibility thing in, this, in, the, in, the, in the syllabus uh, from since 101, take responsibility for your own learning and and, and, and so forth. As you're about to see in some of the research that I'll, I'll, I'll show you, this makes a critical difference in, in, the, uh, in the student experience. Um, okay, let's go on. So that, so that brings us to so that. This quote that I was just showing you here, uh, this quote then, then got me thinking and, 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 and ended up launching this thing that we call um, Project Perseverance. How do, you, how do you help empower students to get to where they can become these self-regulating uh, 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 students who exercise agency and, and, and craft an experience that works for them? Um, Project Perseverance so it consists of um, success stories like some of those I've shared, shared with you, uh, some, 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 re some summaries, some, some, some of these sorts of things. We've got a... Um, We've got a, a wonderful cast of, of advisors. In fact, I just got off the phone with Madeline Herman this morning. Got a few things to share with you. She's she's been uh, the, the, the most closely involved of these of these three uh, four uh, folks. Uh, 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 so so let's move on to our. Um, I like to talk about about what we've learned about brain plasticity in the last 15 years. It, it really uh, as a as a way of thinking about making the most of our experience. Um, so it won't, probably won't surprise you that if you want your brain to change, that is if you want to learn, you need to pay attention, right? It's, it's a, it seems like a, a no-brainer, but, but it's really, really hard. It's really, really hard to pull, it's really, really hard to pull off. Um, our, our attention spans are, are, uh, are not very long, especially if we're sitting down in a classroom like right now, probably. Some of you are probably just kind of like having a hard time with, um, with hanging in there. Uh, so I'll have to, you know, whatever. Um, start throwing things. Uh, anyway, this thing about we we have, we have seen things that we never imagined possible. Stroke victims recovering in ways that 20 years ago no one thought possible. Um, people learning to do things that um, just, just amazing. 
uh, sorts of things. And, and, uh, but it takes in, intense focus is, is, is crucial. And in order to get at intense focus, what, 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 you know, we talked about the beloved as an, uh, as an object of intense focus. Uh, what other kinds of, when do you, when do you find yourself intensely focused? Okay, so if you really love it, yeah. Video games. Video games, okay. And, and video games are interesting. There's a lot to learn from video games yes. about focus uh, as, as to how, how they have challenged you incrementally. We're going to get to that point. How they challenge you incrementally to try and suck you along to, to, to stay in the game, right? If it was too hard to do, you'd lose interest. If it was too easy to do, you would lose interest. You're really good at, 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 at and, and you can construct those kinds of experiences as, as well. Uh, and some other thoughts? Intense focus? Yeah. Playing like guitar or piano. Okay. And, and, and why is that? Um, there's just lots of things you have to think about all at once. And also it is like it, you're trying to, because you really want to learn a certain song, um, you have a goal to perform it, Play it for someone. Mm -hmm. and so you challenge yourself. Yeah, this is a this is a great example of performance, right? Performance will bring out effort. So if we're going to be, you know, called on to perform, uh, and 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 I think it's really useful on the music side to think, you know, what happens if you take on a piece that is really a bridge too far? You get discouraged, and it is not the same intense focus, right? I, I hear people all the time uh, practicing pianos and the plant piano music, and then I'll hear this, <laughs> you know, and uh, sort of like, oops, that's a little bit too hard. Yeah. Break dance battle. Sorry? Break dance battles. Break dance battles. Okay. It's another performance thing. Is another aspect of it you want to bring out? Trying to pay. Uh, it's important for me to be intensely focused because I don't want to just copy what another person does. I want to. Do what they do and do it better. Okay, but the interesting thing about it is, is you learn from people's technique and then you build on it, right? So, and that's a great one for language, is you want to get that repertoire down of basic technique and then you took put your individual spin on it, right? Um, yeah? This just all reminds me of a quote from Muhammad Ali. I don't remember exactly, but he said that. He said that every day he hated absolutely could not stand practicing. It was so hard, and he, could, he just couldn't wait till it was over. But he knew his goal, and he knew where he wanted to be. And I mean, obviously, he was one of the best in the world. Yeah. But it's, it, it just shocked it's, me when I read that, because like, you'd think that, oh, this guy would just love every second of yeah. you know, working with all the hard work and everything. But yeah. he straight up said that he couldn't stand it, and he hated it. But he knew what, he that's, knew what his goal that's, was. That's fascinating. I would try to find a way to like your practice. Um, but it might be, it might be um, uh, that you, there are going to be times when you just need to visualize where you want to be, right? It's powerful, powerful stuff. If you can see yourself succeeding and then find the, the steps, then work back by, okay, these are the steps and it'll make it easier. Yeah. What do you say when I'm searching for something? When you're searching for something, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, if I need to find a certain assignment, I will clear my room. Yeah, 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 good. Uh, a couple weeks ago, my roommate uh, was teaching me this basketball drill where it's to practice like quickness. And you put the ball behind your head, you know, on your neck, and you let it drop. And you're supposed to clap your hands and come back and try to grab it. Yeah. I was watching him do it. I was like, that looks easy. But it's actually really hard. Uh, and I was just like, why can't I get this? And then eventually I thought, where I get to start focusing, that I thought to myself, like, self, all I have to do is catch this basketball behind my back. That's all I have to do. And then, like, as soon as I cleared my mind and really thought about it, like, it just became easier. Where, like, it was really hard before, I was thinking, like, I gotta clap, I bring my arms up, clap, and get the ball. And it's not that far, it's like two and a half feet, and I'm trying to catch it. And I just thought, I was like, that's it, that's all I have to do is catch it. And then I caught it. And like and now now I have like the muscle memory to be able to do that. 
Thank you for mentioning the muscle memory. Okay. So all kinds of things that we think we can't do, all kinds of things that we think we can't do, we're just about five iterations, five practices away from. There's the learning curve, right? So if you, if you look at the learning curve, uh, uh, the typical learning curve, when you first tie your shoe, first time you tie your shoe, it is a bear, okay? The second time you tie your shoe, it takes a little less time, it's still on. Third time, fourth time, exact, you get down to a, po to a point, you know, where, I mean, you just can't even, you can hardly relate to what it was like that first time. Everything you learn is like this. Everything is like that. And some things are really easy to learn, they're not, maybe not worth learning or something like that. But, but, uh, but when you find difficulty learning something, think about the learning curve. Think about the basketball and just think, you know, it's just a matter of, it's just a matter of practice. Okay. Ask yourself often, am I fully engaged? If not, do I need a break? Do I need to mix it up? Do I need to do something different? You, you'll, find, um, you'll find incredible difference. If, like for example, if you sit down, Bill's going to give you articles to read. He's going to give these articles to read, and if you sit down in front of those articles and say to yourself, okay, I've got two hours to read these articles. 35 minutes will go by, and you will still have the same day's look and, and know nothing more than what happened when you first got there. But if you get those five articles or three articles or whatever he, whatever he gives you to read, and if you say, you look at that article, you think, okay, I think if I really, really push myself, I think I can get the gist of this article. I'm going to see if I can get the gist of this article in 12 minutes. And then you set your timer. And you go after it for 12 minutes. And if you study like that, it will be worlds of difference than if you just sit down and think, now I'm going to do my homework. Right? It's a choice. OK. Um, this sort of stuff, uh, this is all, this, yeah, this, this, this follow, follows some of the stuff we've been talking about. That's cool. Okay, now we're talking about flow. Being in the zone. This guy, um, what's his name? Uh, Six Sam behind. Um, so, Dr. Uh, Chick Semihai, uh, he's the guy who pioneered, he's the guy who coined this, this notion of, this notion of flow, as it researched it and, and so forth. And, 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 and here's, what, here's what he says um, it basically boils down to. You, when, when your skill matches the challenge well, you can get into flow. But if skill is low and challenge is high, it's just anxiety, right? And if, and if challenge is low and skill is high, it's boredom, okay? Remember Anna, learning about making, tel making telephone calls in Chinese? You can structure your learning experience to be more in the, you cannot always guarantee being in the flow, in, in the flow zone. It, 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 it sometimes you try and you try and you try and set up the circumstances to make it happen. And the more you do, the more often it happens. Um, you you have agency to, to 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 make choices like Anna did that will um, will make it happen. Okay, now we've come to the uh, the dessert. This is a plot of students in 2011 and their um, progress in terms of speaking gains. Uh, this is not an app, this is, what, what, this is not level three, this is not level two, this is not, don't, don't think about that. This is, this is a way of measuring, did you move from, like for example, let me give you, let me get my, let me get my uh, laser out here. And um, so for example, this, student, this individual right here, Number nine, yeah. Number nine, Ooh, interesting. Put the wrong button. Uh, good to know. Uh, number nine had as his terminal level of ability. Okay, back to the, yeah. 
So number nine started with advanced flow and ended with advanced flow. Okay? This, these people right here also reached advanced flow. Okay? So what happened to number nine is that he got to Jordan three or four months before everybody else and practice, practice, practice while he was there on an internship. And when he did it at OPI, I don't think he was actually a true advanced low speaker, but he got lucky in the interview anyway. He got a, he got a high, high mark. And, uh, and so they rated him advanced low. And at the end of the program, they rated him advanced low. The, the bottom of advanced low to the top of advanced low is an enormous. He learned a ton, right? And notice where he's at. And what is this, what is this thing here? That is satisfaction. Okay, these are self ratings. Every day, students would report. I did X amount of speaking. I spoke. I was out speaking for an hour and a half, two hours, three hours, four hours. Um, I was out speaking for X amount of time, and my level of satisfaction was. Uh, this would be like up here would be like you know seven out of seven, and uh, and and down here is. Uh, this is a, a, a one. So not, no, people were not always you know, having the greatest day, but, um, but the higher the point is on the scale, the higher it is up vertically, the happier experience they were having. Okay? And the further they are to the right, the, more di the greater the difference was between their beginning score and their end score. Okay? So, um, so for example, number seven right here, started at intermediate low, which was one of the lowest ratings that anybody had coming into the program, uh, started at intermediate low and ended at advanced low. An enormous amount of, 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 of learning cover, you know, of, of progress. We'll, we'll talk about, um, we'll talk about the student a, a little bit more. So what do you notice? about the chart. Three quadrants are well populated, or semi-well populated. We have one quadrant that is the barren zone, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's going on here? Why is nobody here? <clears throat> what's that? Because with the increased gains, you're more set to greater satisfaction. Okay. Now this is the big, this is the billion dollar question: Is does gain bring you satisfaction, or does satisfaction bring you gain? Hmm. You think it might be a little of both? Probably. Success. Nothing feeds motivation like success. Success breeds success. So if I have a good day today. Do I want to go out and try again tomorrow? Probably, right? If I have a really bad day today, do I want to go into, out and try tomorrow? No. Okay. So let me tell you some stories here about some of the people on this chart. And again, this is not about a race to be, you know, if, if our people, if, if no one would be happy except those that, that made it to this, you know, this, this kind of game, these kind of games, and we'd have a pretty miserable lot, right? There's 52 people on this, on this program, and um, and what? Three of them won. <laughs> well, that would be that would be a pretty unha un unhappy situation, wouldn't it? And that's that kind of thinking about only the fastest, right? It's, it's only the first person across the finish line that finishes. Well, there are people back here in this in this area who are well. I mean, for example, number nine has skills that are right here, right? So, so you have to kind of reserve judgment about what, what, this all, what this all means. But also, there are people here who really, truly did make very little, I mean, who, 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 who's, who's, whose exit score was, was quite low compared to where they wanted to be, but they are now making plans, for example, to be, um, uh, what's the, Peace Corps volunteers, right? So they're not, they're undaunted by, by the fact that, you know, they're like our friend Ahmed I was just telling you about, right? May not have made a lot of gains there, but boy, keep it at it, plug it away. Or even 10 years later, you never know where someone's going to be. So, so, so we want to be, be careful about judging. 
No, but the but that but that line tells us something. That line tells us is is, is a really really important um, lesson for us. Watch your affect. If you are feeling bad, it is a problem. Okay. I mean, you know, everybody's like, well, yeah, it's a problem. I mean, it's a really a problem that you should do something about. And I don't mean like grouse about or whatever. It's, it's, this is, this is wake-up call to say, hmm, what I'm doing is not working for me. I need, to, I, need to, I, need to do, I need to adjust. And some of it is just starting to say, for example, like for example, number seven. Number seven was the master of positive self-talk. She would say to herself, you know, you know what, this is, this is hard for me. And it really was. It really was hard for her. She, she, uh, she was not a, um, uh, you know, just a, a natural language learner. She, she really had to, had to, had to grit, grit it out. And, and I, I say that, I say that with, um, I almost don't even want to say it. Let's say, let's say it this way. She didn't have a lot of experience in language learning, so, so, so she hadn't learned how to learn languages yet, right? Because when you say to the natural language learners, it's, it's as if we're saying that, you know, some of you can learn language and others can't learn language. Well, the people who learn language happen to be the people who have learned to learn language, and the people who aren't real good at it yet are the people who haven't learned to learn that yet, or aren't, or aren't there yet, right? And a much better way to look at it, a much more accurate way to look at it than looking at it as somehow that, you know, you popped out of the womb and you've got it and you don't, and that's it, <laughs> you know? It's hard luck. Um, so anyway, so number seven, she was the master of self-talk. She would say things like to herself, and, 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 she, and she would do this in, in her weekly reflection, and she, she'd say things like, you are a tough girl. You can do hard things. And, um, uh, and she really had. She had. She came into the program with a lifetime of pushing herself. She'd run the Boston Marathon, um, and she was just a, a, a go-getter who was, who was used to pushing herself. So you're thinking, oh gosh, I haven't run the Boston, Boston Marathon. I can't do that. You know, all of you are. All of you have great, great resources, great, great talents, and all of you can learn to become better at all kinds of things. So you can say, hey, if she can sit here and say, I'm tough, you say, well, oh, I can be tough, right? It takes practice. Why do you get tough? You practice. You train. And, and no better time like starting with than today. So anyway, so, so she's an example of somebody who, was, who really started out, you know, not, not high scores coming into the, um, you know, bar barely made it through 202, uh, really was kicking her trash, really, really, really working hard. And, and um, she just kept at it, kept chugging away, kept chugging away, and made, made uh, tr tremendous gains. Um, so anyway, let me, let me show a couple of other stories to you. Number 10, very sad story. Number 10 thought. This student thought that they didn't need to bring their depression medication with them. Thought they were over beyond that. Thought that this was, you know, this, this happens a lot. People, people think, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of taking this stuff. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be okay, I'm gonna do, anyway. Didn't bring their depression medicine with them. And then we had a murderous time trying to get it through customs. And, and uh, not a happy, not happy camera. Um, let's see. Some of the, uh, they didn't have the kind that he needed. Um, here's another, uh, here's another uh, tragedy story. Um, uh, notice again, zero gain. Now this is not, they aren't really make zero gain, but, but they didn't make the kinds of gains that, for, for example, our, our, our positive self-talk per, person, person made. Um, what else? Oh, here, number 32, negative gain. Now that happens sometimes that you have a bad interview and so forth. She really, she learned a ton, but she also hung out with the wrong person, wrong person to hang out with. Um, she was constantly hanging out with some, somebody who was, in, who was a, a negative uh, presence, present negative impact, and, and uh, very, 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 very unfortunate. Um, number 42, made a great friend, 
loved hanging out with him, loved everything we were reading, just ate it up, ate it up, ate it up, ate it up. Had a great, great, great experience. Um, worked, worked really hard, but, um, but my guess is that uh, probably slept, exercised, oh yeah, don't, don't, uh, yeah, don't, don't cut, don't cut yourself short on those things. All right, let's go on to one more graph. Um, this graph is a plotter, is it, it shows the relationship between, um, uh, this is a, I think this is a percentage of, of negative comments, uh, or it's a, it's a measure of, as I recall, it's a measure of negative comments and the hours out, yeah, okay, so this is hours speaking per day. So notice <coughs> that, that the students, we, we looked at these, at these journals, these learning journals, and, and, and he, he just selected this, this, this cross-section, I guess, of, of learning journals where he's able to look and see people who have written quite a bit. And some of these people were averaging three and a half, three, three and a half hours a day speaking. And they didn't have very much negative to say about their experience. But the person who was averaging one hour a day speaking wasn't really having a very happy thing. Now, which one caused the other? Well, it's very closely related, right? Um, but uh, anyway, lessons to learn. Lessons to, less, good lessons to learn there. So this is from our friend, the guy I told you about the, um, that, that, that had that quote about becoming self-regulating learners. You notice that he talks about how we stoke motivation, things that we can do. We can do well. Teachers play a really important role with that, and you're, and and um, and we've we've got some great teachers. If you don't have a perfect teacher that makes for you, work on seeing the cap cup half full. Work on building that relationship with that teacher. Work on, you know, work on making it make it work. Look how look at look at this cohesive learner group, um, appropriate group norms. This this. The, the, the woman I was telling you about, uh, the, the, the Boston Marathoner, um, let me just read a couple of the notes that, 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 that she, she said, she, she, uh, she gave us, uh, or when I, I interviewed her, uh, I talked to her last night just to refresh my memory, and she, some of the things she said that were, um, she said, you know, when people, when I was kind of not doing so well, she says, I got angry, and I said, I'm going to show the world. It was really, really interesting. Um, before she went on study abroad, her, uh, one of her teachers, one of our TAs, said, no one's going to the Middle East for four months and coming back speaking fluently. Well, some people are coming pretty close to that, some of these people on the right side. Those guys I was showing you about, you know, number 42, um, commented at the end of their study abroad experience. Now, now there's lots to learn, and I, I don't know what the definition of fluency is. That's a really vague term. Um, uh, but that person was fairly automatic in their speech and found that they could talk about everything they wanted to. Not elegantly, not, you know, to 100% to, to, um, satisfaction, but they were able to talk about things. But this was enormously helpful to her, she said, to understand that you are not going to become fluent in one four-month stint. You're gonna, it's an investment toward it. She said, I ended up surpassing my goals. But the fact that she didn't have unrealistic expectations. One of our biggest deflators of motivation is to come in having unrealistic expectations and then um, you know, not being able to meet, meet those. Um, so she talks about go knowing what to expect, challenges. There will be challenges. Go knowing you'll be stressed out. You'll cry. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she said, she said, um, she, she says, one of the things that really, she said, I made great friends on the program with positive people, and I avoided negative people. For the most part, she was raving about the kinds of people that were on. We had just a marvelous group, and, and uh, she says, uh, we laughed, we shared frustrations, um, and, and uh, uh, she, she, she used the TAs, great, great uh, faculty. Um, she said, I had cheerleaders around me, and I was a cheerleader for others. It was good energy. I enjoyed writing my weekly report and to sort out my feelings. This is really, really helpful. Because um, some people see it as busy work, and what a shame. I mean, look what she, she took this, this, this at the end of the week. She said, I enjoyed writing the weekly report. It helped me to sort out my feelings. 
a lot of positive self-talk stemmed from those reports. She would think, oh, I'm doing this. I need to, I need to pump myself up. She says, it was almost like taking the sacrament. But that was a really, really interesting comment. Um, mentally, it was, help, it was mentally helpful for me. Uh, helped, uh, and helped, it helped me to set goals. Even if I didn't write them all down, it was helping me to, to formulate goals. Helped me to sh and it helped me to think short term. Remember what we were talking about? If that's, it's a vague thing that's out there, you know, it ain't gonna happen. She talked about some of the sad stories about some of the people who could only think of the day they were going to leave or, or uh, uh, and so forth. All right, so, well, we've got enough brain. I wanna just uh, end with this, this comment uh, on anxiety from Madeline Ehrman, our, our, our this colleague that I was talking with this morning. She, um, this is really true, that, uh, that anxiety needs cognition. Now, I wanna end with the story of, of a, of a uh, I, was at, I was visiting a study abroad program in North Africa a few years ago, and, and a colleague of mine uh, was really stressed out. She was running the program, uh, and, and, a colleague, and she was really stressed out, really, really great professional, um, and, and, and constructed a marvelous program, but they had a student who was, who was, who was poisoning, um, poisoning things with bad attitude. This, the student had been, had been a great student, and then took the midterm and didn't perform as well on the midterm. The midterm wasn't as good as the student thought uh, he was going to do. And, and it just started to become more and more bitter and bitter and started criticizing you know, the program and, and so forth and, and, and bad-mouthing bad people. And he was writing about this in his blog and it was getting to people and, um, in, uh, anyway. Demoralizing the faculty, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And she said, I don't know what to do. I mean, I, I can't tell this person not to say these things. Um, what, what do I do? And I said, let's just see what happens. I'm gonna be talking to this group tomorrow. I, I, she invited me to speak to her students. Um, and I said, and I said, just let's just see if, if, if what happens. So I, talk, I talked about anxiety eating, eat, that anxiety eats cognition. And I, and I talked about how you have these two reactions, either, either fight or flight. I said, so you might start, you know, you, 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 you get anxious, and then you start attacking the, you know. And I, I, I didn't really pinpoint him, but I came close. And, um, and uh, five minutes after my talk, he walked into this director's office, and he says, I need to apologize. I've, um, I've had a bad attitude, and, it's, and, and I, am going to, I am going to turn it around. I am going to, he did, he did. On a dime, turned it around, finished the program, and was back, you know, a contributor making, making, making things really good. Um, you're going to find yourself, some of you are going to be so surprised about the negative emotions that you, that you experience. Um, some of you may squeak, squeak by and, and, and it won't happen, and, and that's great, that's, that's wonderful. But count on it happening. It's so common to just watch for it. Watch for negative, negative feelings and think, hmm, where are these negative emotions come from? We had uh, Madeline and I. Um, Madeline, Madeline and I ended up. Uh, we gave a presentation at, 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 in Denver uh, in November with, with some of our students uh, uh, on Project Perseverance. And at dinner, we were talking about just how important self-awareness is. Being able to, to to identify, I'm there, right? Because usually you're thinking, I hate this. I hate this system. I hate these admin. I hate these teachers, right? You're thinking those are. You have this righteous, self-righteous indignation, right? And you're, you're just thinking that God has made you judge of, of, of everything, and, and you're and you're going to write things, and you're going to write your mother, and you're going to write President Samuelson, and you're going to, you know, whatever, and you're going to, you know, you're going to make sure that somebody, somebody sets things right and so forth. And uh, if you are self-aware, you'll catch yourself as you slip into that negative thinking. And you'll step back and you'll say, whoa, 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 whoa. This, is, this, is, this sounds fishy. And you'll, and you'll be able to, to back up and back away from that and, and pull out of a out, out of tail. If we're not self-aware, we, we have seen example after example after example of, st of students get into really, really mean tailspins. And, and fortunately, there's good coaching around, and many of these people have been able to pull it out before the end. But um, 
but not always. Um, not always. There, some of you will come. Some of you will. Some of you in October. By October, will have decided you picked the wrong major. You will have decided I never want to go to this region again. I hate Arabs. I hate Arab culture. I do not ever want to see or hear uh, an Arab or hear Arabic spoken again. It, some of you will be there in, in, in October, if, if past experiences is any indicator. Yeah? Um, my roommate last semester in he, he would say that probably three, five times a week. And just yesterday morning, he just got an internship to, in Cairo. <laughs> um, so I mean, you know, it's one of those you think he hated it so much, and it actually negatively affected a lot of us in the apartment. Exactly, but exactly. Look at what he's doing now. He's going to go and use it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, so uh, I wish you, I wish you all the best. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a marvelous adventure. It's, it's, uh, it's, it, it will, it will stretch you and learn things. I was just reading some of this literature on self-awareness. Sorry, I have to give you a homework assignment. Just one second. Um, I was reading this literature on self-awareness where it talked about experience is the best builder of self-awareness. So. You could tell yourself, you know, I'm going to be self-aware, and and that's a good that's a good thing to to, to decide to become. But it, it, it's a it's a it's a journey, it's a process. So Dill and I talked about this, and we want to have you work. The, your homework assignment for next week is to work on self-awareness. The way we want you to do that this week is we want you to record, we want catch yourself when you hear when you start to hear negative voices or you have a negative reaction to something, catch yourself and write down, okay, what am I feeling? Where do I, where do I, where's that coming from? What, what am I inclined to do? How can I step back and choose a more healthy approach to, to dealing with whatever the stimulus is for that, okay? So every day, be watching for negative emotions recording those, find out where are those negative emotions coming by. You know the old thing about know yourself, right? Um, and this is this is this is the part part of the training. So so start 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 catching, start observing. It's amazing how how much of that that negative voice just keeps going and going and going, and you don't even realize it's 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 going. So good luck with your uh, trying to trying to catch yourself. It's, it's not easy. Come uh, back.